Hello, I'm Gavin Clark. And I'm here with the National Museum of Computing at Bletchley Park. And we've been tweeting. We're taking your questions over Twitter. Anything you'd like to know, just ask TNMOC with the obvious and obligatory hashtag in front of that. So that's hashtag ask TNMOC. We've been tweeting, of course, uh, one of them most recent ones, and some, and some interesting responses. Um, we wrote, before Apple, Intel, Microsoft dominated schools and homes, there was the BBC Micro, which is 40 next year, um, which is, of course, housed at, amongst the museum's collections. It introduced a generation to coding and shaped careers. We asked people what their memories were of that. We've got some interesting responses to that tweet, obviously, one of which was came from Mike Whitehouse. How did we screw it up and get bashed by the Americans when the British computer industry was booming in the 1980s? Obviously, there were a lot of computers in the 1980s and very well-known brands are out there. Some of you might know, uh, be familiar with them today. Uh, I have with me Roger Johnson, one time uh, Birkbeck University of London IT department. And we have Andrew Herbert, who worked at Microsoft Research in Cambridge. Gentlemen, how would you answer that? So I think the one word answer is marketing, which Americans are very good at. Um, it's a little more subtle than that. Um, the British computer industry in the 80s had focused very much on home computing, computing in schools um, and games. And so it was selling to consumers rather than to businesses. Um, there wasn't really a strong um, business software side. Um, and certainly in the UK, um, yeah, the kind of companies like banks and so forth didn't see the potential for small machines to replace what was going on with mainframes. Um, and those companies were all competing for a share of the British market, um, which while it is very vibrant, is, is actually quite small. Um, in parallel with that, obviously there are American companies um, competing um, in the same space um, in the USA. Um, and Apple was amongst those in the early days and others like Tandy. Um, the big change was when IBM, who dominated um, mainframe applications, which was itself the dominant form of computing at that time in the US, when they realized people were starting to do work on home computers, they recognized they needed to have a product in that market. Um, and so they came up with the personal computer. Um, and with the PC, what you get coming together are, are three giant American companies. IBM, which dominated mainframes and, and applications in the business world. You had Intel, who were a very large force in the uh, manufacture of microprocessors and, and memory chips. And of course, you had Microsoft, um, who prepared MS-DOS and, and basic the, the programming language. Um, Microsoft was quite small at that time, but well on its way to becoming a large company. So you have three very powerful companies um, selling into a very large market, um, which gave them a tremendous amount of um, horsepower. Um, and it's much easier um, if, you, yeah, if you're in the American market and you've built up all the sales and support to support that market to come to Europe and sell into the European countries. Um, it's much harder to go the other way. Indeed, in my, my own career, I was involved in various startups in the 1980s and 90s. And the model in Cambridge was do the engineering in Cambridge, but do the sales and marketing in the US and invade Europe from the West. Why do we struggle to penetrate the United States? And this, I think, trivializing slightly our rock bands suffer and our pop bands suffer exactly the same fate why do we why in a, a in a computing sense do we struggle what is it about it in a, in a nutshell um in a nutshell i think it's because um we only and historically speaking and attitudes have changed people have learned but certainly at that kind of time um you wanted to secure the home market um and that was a tough enough challenge and by the time you'd done that, the Americans could see what was going on and developed their own solutions. Um, and it's kind of true in, in most countries, you know, people like to buy the homegrown product. Mm -hmm. The American market is so huge, it's much easier to grow to be a, a, a mega sized corporation in America, just serving your own backyard. Right. And there was consolidation as well in the United States. You know, they, they had a proliferation of personal computers as well. Many names of which have gone long since gone, haven't they? But here we are today with a, 
a handful who, which have, have survived that time and are here with us today. Well, that's right. I mean, that that the yeah, that steamroller of IBM, Intel, and, and Microsoft um, created the new market of office computing. Um, it very people very rapidly realised those office computers could do what the home computers would do. And if you remember, yeah, there were various models produced. Some targeted more at consumers, others targeted at enterprises and business, and of course, in due course, servers. Um, mm. Uh, as as the personal computers even push the mainframes out of uh, out of the way, um, so yeah, it was essentially another generation, um, and um, yeah, we we our companies were so focused on that home computing and games business and fighting amongst themselves um, that they really didn't spot the the business computing opportunity um, until too late. Right, and and Roger, what's your what's your take on this as well? I well. Uh, Andrew, I, I agree entirely with what Andrew's just said. What I'd add um, going back is there is a danger of thinking that there was a golden age in which British computing um, uh, uh, was, uh, you know, what, what, what was superior to uh, or, or, or had competitive products. I was struck some years ago. I was talking to a man, a very interesting man called uh, Raymond Bird, Dickie Bird, who's, who was the designer of the HEC-1, which is in the TNMOC Museum, uh, and which was built in 1951. And he uh, was for many years uh, a designer with, I, with BTM at, at that time, which became ICT, which became I, uh, part of ICL. And his view was quite simple on the, the, this issue. And that was that for many years, the British computer industry uh, was protected by sterling currency, pound, shillings and pence. Mm. Um, BTM, who were the first large scale producer of uh, commercial computers in the UK, they had a license from IBM uh, for all of IBM's products, they stopped, they terminated the license in 1949, but uh, continued to uh, modify the IBM designs to work with sterling currency. And the, that continued right through until 1971, when uh, Britain went over to decimal currency. Because if you think about pound, shillings and pence, um, it's not decimal, and it required computers and software and hardware printers uh, to, to be specially manufactured. And for many years, that protected uh, mm. the, um, the British. BTM had an exclusive license for the whole of the British Empire, uh, apart from Canada. Well, Canada, of course, always had dollars and cents in the American model. BTM had a license from IBM for to sell modified IBM products worldwide. And Dickie Bird's view has always been that once sterling went out of use, uh, the writing was well and truly on the wall. Uh, so I don't think there ever was a golden age and we've always suffered uh, from the um, size of the American home market. And the fact also that American users of computing by and large will only buy from companies that at least pretend to be based in America. You have mm. to sell from an American address. It's no good having a UK address on your publicity material. Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. So it's uh, some kind of inbuilt structural issues and some, uh, some, some sub more subjective factors at the time, which were behind this thing. An interesting point that there never was a golden age. It was just maybe business as usual and structural issues and tactical issues that were kind of got us where we are today. Thank you very much. And I hope it answers your question, Mike.